Get ready for a mind-blowing journey through the wonders of Neptune. When the famous Voyager 2 spacecraft reached Neptune in 1989, it stumbled upon some incredible surprises. Picture this, six new moons, mesmerizing rings, and two wild storms that could make your hair stand on end. These storms were no ordinary tempest. They were swirling, counterclockwise winds in Neptune's southern hemisphere, racing at an unbelievable speed of 1,500 miles per hour. Astronomers were astounded. The first one was named the Great Dark Spot. The second one was very originally called Dark Spot 2. Even though the storms vanished by the time the Hubble Space Telescope turned its lens to Neptune, scientists were still eager to uncover the secrets behind their ferocious winds. Over the following years, we found several more similar spots on Neptune. Hubble has been our interstellar paparazzi, capturing breathtaking images of these wild storms. In 1994, it snapped photos showing that the two spots previously seen by Voyager 2 had vanished into thin space proving that these storms don't stick around for long. Well, at least not by giant planet standards. Then, in 2015, astronomers were analyzing images of a small whirlwind on Neptune, and they noticed something extraordinary happening. Bright white clouds began swirling in a different spot, and by 2018, voila! A massive dark storm as wide as Earth had burst into existence right there. It was the first time we've ever witnessed this storm being born with our own eyes. Imagine being there to witness the moment a great dark spot storm is born on Neptune. It's like watching a cosmic miracle unfold. This event has given scientists new information about these mysterious storms. So we now know of six great dark spots on Neptune. And here's the weirdest part. These massive storms on Neptune behave very differently from, let's say, the famous Great Red Spot on Jupiter. The Great Dark Spots have the freedom to wander around the planet before eventually being torn apart by powerful winds high up in Neptune's atmosphere. It's like they're interplanetary nomads. Now, when the newborn storm appeared, scientists noticed something fascinating. There were these bright white clouds made of frozen methane floating above the storm. This discovery tells us that these great dark spots form deeper in Neptune's atmosphere than we previously thought. It's like the storm starts brewing from deep down and pushes methane clouds up to the top. It's a bit like when you see fluffy clouds forming above a mountain peak. By understanding these connections, scientists can learn more about how these storms work and what makes them so unique. The study team also estimated how often these fantastic storms appear on Neptune. It seems they pop up every four to six years, and each great dark spot lives a relatively short life of around two years. Some, however, manage to stick around for up to six years. Impressive longevity. But there's still so much we don't know about these captivating storms. We're itching to measure their wind speeds, for instance. Scientists estimate them to be around 223 miles per hour. It's quite similar to wind speeds within Jupiter's great red spot. Thankfully, more observations and analyses from Hubble will help us uncover these mysteries and more. But there was another puzzle that left scientists scratching their heads. Imagine this. Despite being farther away from the sun than its neighbor, Uranus, Neptune was actually warmer. Let's pause for a moment and think about what warmer means on a gas giant like Neptune. Unlike our solid Earth, we can't stick a thermometer into its surface. We can only peek into the outer layers which means we're not getting the full picture. So, we have to rely on temperature measurements taken at different altitudes, since Neptune's core is likely quite small. By taking these measurements, scientists discovered that Neptune and Uranus aren't actually at different temperatures. They're practically the same. This doesn't quite add up because Neptune gets less sunlight than Uranus. So, could one mystery of the weird storms hold the key to unraveling the other of the weird temperatures? Let's see. Of course, scientists dove into this case right away. And it turns out that Neptune is a little show-off when it comes to heat. Measurements taken by Voyager reveal that Neptune emits over twice as much heat as it absorbs from the Sun. It's like Neptune is warming itself up somehow, matching the heat level of Uranus. Quite intriguing, isn't it? But here's the plot twist. Neptune isn't the only rebel in the gas giant gang. Jupiter and Saturn also emit almost double the heat they receive just like Neptune. 
So Uranus is the only oddball in this tale. It's like a warm-up marathon where Jupiter takes the gold, Saturn comes in second, then Neptune, and Uranus is simply out of the picture. Curious, right? Now, the reason for this might be that Uranus lacks a significant internal heat source, unlike its counterparts. But what exactly is this internal heat source? In simple terms, it's the heat that remains from when the solar system was formed and the planets were being formed. On Neptune, and also Jupiter and Saturn, this extra heat comes from something called gravitational contraction. Imagine the planet slowly getting smaller because of gravity pulling it inward. As it shrinks, the material falling inward transforms its potential energy into heat energy, which then escapes from the planet. So why does Uranus miss out on this internal heat source? Well, something fishy must have happened in Uranus's early days, perhaps a collision that sent it spinning sideways. This event might have messed up the process, leaving Uranus without a significant internal heat source. Now, here's another rather funny idea. Instead of releasing heat from their interiors at a steady pace, these frozen planets might just have epic burps of heat. Yep, you heard it right. Uranus might be in a quiet phase, while Neptune has recently let out a big, hearty burp. They might be like episodes of convection, which occur in specific moments, but are separated by long periods of time. It's like hiccups. But until we witness one of these episodes in action, we can't be sure if this theory holds true. Another theory is that it could all be a matter of age. The amount of heat a planet radiates mostly depends on how old it is and how quickly or slowly it releases that heat. For example, an older planet tends to be colder. There's also a pretty wild rain theory. On these gas giants, there might be some helium rain going on, and maybe it could affect the amount of heat released. We don't know for sure yet. And finally, Let's go back to our mysterious storms. Now here's where things are getting interesting. Those winds are pretty crazy, and the temperature might play a part in this. The extreme cold on these planets creates conditions with very little friction. This would allow the winds to move at a super fast speed. In other words, unlike Earth, which has mountains and obstacles that slow down winds, the gas giants have a smooth surface. But here's the really interesting part. Could these storms be connected to the heat inside the planets? Well, there might be a connection, but it's a delicate balance. To unravel these secrets, we need to dig into the planet's insides, things like their masses, core sizes, and density profiles. Luckily, NASA's Juno has been collecting top-notch gravitational data for Jupiter, helping us create their awesome models. Computer simulations have given us a tantalizing idea. The winds on these ice giants might party only on the upper layers of their atmospheres. It's like a wild rave up there. This suggests that the super speedy winds we see on Uranus and Neptune are caused, at least in part, by the release of heat when stuff like water condenses. Understanding all these mind-boggling effects is no piece of cake. You see, a single year on Neptune lasts a whopping 165 Earth years. That's like waiting for centuries to see the seasons change. So, studying Neptune's seasonal cycle requires super-duper patience from space scientists. So, let's wait and see how this story unfolds in the future. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.